Welcome to my channel, detailing events throughout the decades. 1980. Lindy Chamberlain, Dingo took my baby. Alice Lynn Chamberlain, known as Lindy, was born March 4, 1948. The New Zealand-born daughter of AUIs and Cliff Murchison. The family moved to Australia in 1969. The family were members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Lindy met and eventually married Pastor, Michael Chamberlain on November 18, 1969. For the first five years of marriage, the Chamberlains lived in Tasmania. They would eventually move to northern Queensland. During the 1970s, the Chamberlains had two sons. Aidan born in 1973 and Reagan born in 1976. Lindy had always wanted a girl. Lindy's first girl, Azaria Chantel Lauren Chamberlain was born July 11, 1980. When Azaria was nine weeks old, the family went on a camping trip to Uluru, better known as Ayers Rock. They arrived on August 16, 1980. On August 17, Lindy claimed that Azaria was taken from the tent by a dingo. A massive search was organized, but Azaria was never found. The jumpsuit which she had been wearing, was discovered about a week later, 400 meters from the tent, blood stained around the neck. This indicated that Azaria was most likely dead. Many people did not believe that Azaria was taken from the tent by a dingo, and Lindy became a suspect in the disappearance. Both Lindy and Michael maintained that a dingo had taken their baby. Two years before Azaria had gone missing, Ayers Rock Chief Ranger, Derek Roth had been writing to the government urging a dingo cull, trying to avoid a tragedy. He claimed that dingoes in the area were becoming increasingly cheeky, and dingoes were sometimes going up to people, and even at times biting them. He feared that a tragedy would happen. Lindy maintained that her daughter at the time of the disappearance, was wearing a matinee jacket over the jumpsuit, but this was not found at the time. The initial inquiry into the disappearance was held in Alice Springs in December 1980 and January 1981. Dennis Barrett, a coroner supported the Chamberlain's claims that a dingo had taken their daughter. However, the Supreme Court quashed the findings of the initial inquest and ordered a second inquest to take place in December 1981, with the taking of evidence concluded in February 1982. By an indictment presented to the Supreme Court of the Northern Territory in September 1982, Lindy was charged with Azaria's murder. Michael was charged as an accessory after the fact. On October 1982, the Chamberlains were both found guilty as charged. In committing the Chamberlains for trial, the coroner who performed the second inquest and recorded the findings to the case and manner of Azaria's death, stated that although the evidence was to a large degree circumstantial, a jury properly instructed, could arrive at a verdict. With regard to the clothing, he surmised that the Chamberlain's new dingoes were in the area, and attempted to simulate a dingo attack, recovered Azaria's buried body, removed her clothing, damaged it by cutting, rubbed it in vegetation and deposited the clothes for a later recovery. On this basis, and that of blood evidence of unknown origin found in the Chamberlain's car, the Chamberlains were prosecuted and convicted for the murder of their two-month-old daughter. Lindy was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole, and Michael Chamberlain's sentence was suspended for three years as an accessory to murder. The stain, believed to have been blood that was found in the Chamberlain's car, was later determined to be most likely a sound deadening compound from a manufacturing overspray. The prosecution's theory was that, in a five to ten minute absence from the campfire, Lindy returned to the tent, changed into tracksuit bottoms, took Azaria to the car, cut her throat with scissors and waited for her to die. Hid the body in a camera case in the car, cleaned up the blood, removed the tracksuit bottoms, returned back to the tent, did something to leave blood splashes, and then returned to the campfire, without attracting the attention of other campers. She then later returned to the tent and immediately claimed she saw a dingo taking her baby. No one noticed alleged blood on her clothes in the hours after the disappearance. Which was just fortunate. Lindy opened the car, where the body was supposed to be, 
giving the dingo the scent of Azaria from the clothes still in the car, without her husband's knowledge. Fellow camper, Sally Lowe said she heard Azaria cry after Lindy had returned back to the campfire. Both Sally Lowe and Michael Chamberlain gave evidence that they heard a baby cry at the time when Lindy was with them at the camp area, and Azaria was believed to be in the tent. Witness, Judith West, who was camping 30 meters away, testified to hearing a dog's low growl coming from the direction of the tent. Lindy gave evidence that in the response to others hearing Azaria cry, she went to the tent. Halfway to the tent, she thought she saw a dingo emerging from the tent, and was having difficulty getting out, and shaking its head vigorously. She cried Michael, Michael, the dingo's got my baby, and ran to the tent to check inside. Azaria was missing. She chased in the direction she thought the dingo had gone, and called to Michael to get a torch. Police Detective Sergeant, John Lincoln gave evidence that he took photos of large paw prints a few centimeters from Azaria's cot and found what he thought was blood outside the tent. He collected samples, but these were never tested. Sally Lowe gave evidence that she had gotten, Reagan out of the tent after the attack. When she was in the tent, she saw a pool of blood but this was disputed. Police Constable, Frank Morris gave evidence that there were only a few drops of blood on a couple of blankets and on the sleeping bag which was in the tent. A scientific witness located blood on the wall of the tent. Scientist, Dr. Andrew Scott agreed that the spray mark was consistent with a dingo carrying a bleeding baby, but he did not believe it was human blood. Canine hairs were located in the tent and on Azaria's jumpsuit and the Chamberlains did not own a dog. The president of the Dingo Foundation, Leigh Harris gave evidence that based on years of studying dingoes, that a dingo could envelope the head of a baby in its mouth and carry it over a long distance. He gave photos of a dingo opening its jaws and enveloping a head of a baby-sized doll in its jaws. However, Professor James Cameron, claimed it was impossible for a dingo to open its jaws wide enough for a child's head to fit inside. Max Whittaker, a tourist, gave evidence that he had helped with the search that night, and was with the head ranger and an aboriginal tracker, and claimed they followed dingo paw prints and scrape marks in the sand, and this looked like the dingo was carrying a heavy object. Azaria's clothes were only found 30 meters from a dingo's den, although they were not aware this was a den at the time the clothes were found. Evidence indicated human intervention between the time Azaria clothes were discovered and the time the police took photos of them. Camper, Wallace Goodwin was the first to discover the jumpsuit, singlet, and nappy. He gave evidence that the jumpsuit was undone, and that the clothes were lying on the ground naturally, not as if they had been placed there. The singlet was beside the jumpsuit and not inside it. Police Constable Frank Morris was first to examine the clothes and gave evidence that only the top four buttons were undone on the jumpsuit, and that the singlet was inside the jumpsuit. He claimed he had picked up the clothes to check for human remains, then returned them to be photographed. The singlet that had been placed back in the jumpsuit was inside out. Lindy claimed that she always made sure that clothes were not inside out. At the trial, Lindy was expecting her fourth child. After her conviction, Lindy was escorted to Barrymore Prison, where she gave birth to her fourth child, Kalia on November 17, 1982. An appeal to the federal court against her conviction was subsequently dismissed. Another appeal was also rejected in November 1984. On February 2, 1986, Azaria's matinee jacket, which police maintained did not exist, was found partially buried adjacent to a dingo den in an isolated area, near Ayers Rock. Five days later on February 7, with the discovery of the jacket, which supported Lindy's defense, she was released from prison, and her life sentence remitted by the Northern Territory government. In 1987, a royal commission investigated the matter further. Trevor Morling, concluded that the hypothesis that Lindy had murdered Azaria had not been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. After the Chamberlains were acquitted by the Supreme Court in September 1988, and their convictions overturned, a third inquest took place. The coroner stated that it was a paper inquest, rather than a full inquest since there was little new evidence. 
an open verdict in Azaria's cause of death was returned. Lindy and Michael continued to push for a resolution to the investigation into Azaria's death. A new inquest began February 2012. New figures on dingo attacks were collected by the Queensland Government's Department of Environment and Resource Management, and provided this evidence at the new inquest. Coroner, Elizabeth Morris stated that the new evidence in relation to dingo attacks on infants and young children had helped convince her to reopen the investigation, 32 years after intense media and public attention. The Chamberlains wanted to know what had happened to Azaria. The Chamberlains stated they remained unsatisfied with bare acquittal and presumed innocence. On June 12, 2012, an Australian coroner made a final ruling that a dingo took baby Azaria from the campsite in 1980, and had caused her death. Coroner Elizabeth Morris apologised to the Chamberlain family, while an amended death certificate was immediately made available to them. It was the end of a case that had brought international attention, over three decades, and proved all those who were convinced Lindy had murdered her daughter wrong. Forever remembering baby Azaria, who was taken too soon. May you never be forgotten. Forever praising Lindy and Michael for their courage and determination in getting to the truth. Thank you for watching and learning about these tragic events throughout history. Please subscribe to my channel, to see other events throughout history.